Good evening, church. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Colin, the pulpit minister here at Central Church of Christ. And this is Dan Spaeth. He's one of our elders. And here at Central Church of Christ, it's our mission to be God's heart and hands in this community and beyond. If you'd like to learn more about what that means, I want to encourage you to head over to our website at www.churchvictoria.com. This is our Wednesday evening conversation through the law and the prophets where we open up the Old Testament. We move through the narrative and the text and we see how it impacts us today as the church and how it how that text connects to Jesus. Um, if you're listening Listening to this on the Heart and Heads podcast. I want to thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you have the bell turned on so you get notified every time we upload a video. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure to like and share. That really helps us out. And make sure to comment down below. Um, if this ministry has blessed you or you'd like to partner with us in this ministry, I want, I want to encourage you to head over to that website. At the top of the page, we have a donate button that uh, take, will take you to PayPal, and you can partner with us as we seek to teach and preach the gospel. Uh, we're going to pray and get into the lesson. Again, church, thank you so much for joining us. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity we have to study together. We pray your blessings upon our study. We pray your blessing on the hearers of this of this study, those who will be pay, turning, tuning in and listening to this, whenever that might be. We pray your blessings upon them and that uh, that we might say things, Father, that would help uh, spark a, a desire, that we might help them in, in conflicts that they may have. Just help us, Father, to realize how important learning what you have to say is for us and helping us to do it the right way. Father, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the technology. And thank you for those that are involved in, uh, in doing putting this on. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. We're going to be in Numbers chapter 9. <laughs> we're moving. Uh, kind of. We're, 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 we're moving. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going to get these guys moving. Mm. Eventually. We're, gonna, we're moving away from this mountain. Yeah. And we're going to get started. Pretty quick. Yeah, we're, we're in there. So today, you know, again, what what have all these chapters been about? Because, I mean, if you're doing doing a yearly Bible reading plan, everything starts getting hairy around Exodus chapter 19, Exodus chapter 20. Yep. That's when the way it's been written up until that point kind of changes and goes off the rails for most modern readers, right? Yep. Because up until that point, it's been a pretty linear narrative, right? Mm -hmm. It's been one event and the next, the next chronologically. Yeah. And, but after that, it kind of blows up and it's not, you have a lot of legal text, you have a lot of do this or do that or setting up these things. And it, it's hard, it's hard to kind of keep that in mind. Well, we're coming, we're coming out of that finally. And you have an entire book of the Bible, Leviticus, which I would argue is the most important book in the, the first five books of the Bible. It is the most important book, but because it is written in heavy sacrificial legalese, right? This heavy law code to deal with sacrifice because it's written in that way, we have a very hard time grabbing on to how this affects the narrative. But it, it's the most important book and the most impactful book on the narrative because the narrative starting in Genesis is we began in the presence of God in the garden. Mm -hmm. We rebelled against God. We got cast out <laughs> of the garden and we've been promised that we're going to be that we're going to be led back in. And so that's what we're looking for. We're looking to be led back into the presence of God. Leviticus answers that question how that's going to work. Mm -hmm. Leviticus tells us this is how you get into the presence of God. And so the Israelites not on their in own their, in their in their time. In their time, time, yeah. But it always points to us. Yes. So because this is only a shadow. Right. And that was built in, right? Yeah. So if we, we talk about Leviticus 16 again, we see a lot of how dealing with these sacrifices mm -hmm. don't deal with sin definitively. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You have a high priest who has to offer sacrifices on his own behalf. Yes. You have a high priest who even after he's offered these sacrifices, he's got to hide himself before God with the incense, right? He's got to wave the incense around him and then walk into the presence of God. He can't just walk in. Right. So and then they're going to do that day of atonement ceremony. Excuse me. They're going to do it every year. Mm -hmm. So so think about what that's saying. It's saying that we've constantly got these sins that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. We're not all really allowed back into the presence of God. Only this one guy and kind of. Yeah. Right. So all of that's built in. But the overall structure, mm -hmm. the overall theme, how do we get into the presence of God? Well, something has to die. Yeah. We've got this rebellion. We've got this thing, this evil Something has to die to, to take that away. And then 
we might be able to, to, to kind of see God. Well, in the New Testament, we find out how that really works. And the blood of Christ is thousand times, billion well, times, infinitely tell, if, times if more you value. Look, if you look at Hebrews chapter 8, mm -hmm. and, and uh, if you can pull that up, Lee, in, in verse 3, it says, Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, so it was necessary for this one to have something to offer. Okay, he's talking about Jesus. Yeah, right. If if he were on earth, he would have not be a priest, for there are already priests who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. And that's what we talked about before, that the priesthood is going to come from the seed line of Aaron. It's going to come from the seed line of Levi. Okay? Yes. And he says, they serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. That is why Moses was warned when he was about to build a tabernacle, see to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But in fact, the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is a mediator is superior to the old one, since the new covenant is established on better promises. You know, what he's telling us here, you can, you can look at the Old Testament and always with the vision of pointing it down the road. All right. right. We're going down the road. Here he tells, in Hebrews, he tells, it's a shadow. All of it, not just the tabernacle, all of it. The priesthood, everything is a shadow. Everything we've been studying is a shadow pointing us. It's it's just a copy yeah. of what's in heaven, of what is going to be based on what Jesus does. So we have a better promise, but it all leads us to Jesus. That's right. And I think we, I think we need to, uh, I want to reemphasize that always because it's so important for us. You're, we're talking about being coming in the presence of God. Summarizing the Old Testament is really, that's what it is. It's They were in it, out of it, back in it. Now here's how you stay there. And they couldn't do it. God says, okay, down the road, I'm going to bring one to bring you into my presence. And I'll not only forgive you, I'll forget it. So we have a better promise, better covenant through Jesus. But it, all this is leading to that. Yeah. Well, and you said they couldn't do it. So, and that's and that's a big debate. And I want to acknowledge that that is a big debate among that they couldn't Christians do it? today that they couldn't do it. So, Peter says that in Acts chapter fifteen. Why are we going to put this law on mm -hmm. the Gentiles when neither our nor us nor our fathers could keep it? Yeah. So, so Peter does say that they couldn't keep it. Mm -hmm. Um. But that that's a big debate because big the, debate about who? Well, it's a big debate among Christians today. You have a sect of, of Christianity, uh, members of the church, who would argue that they could do it, they didn't, they chose not to do it. That's and not the, what it says. Well, peace. The emphasis here is, because Moses says in Deuteronomy they can do it. Mm -hmm. Moses says you can keep this law, okay. right? Moses points out that you can do it. You don't have to go over here, you mm -hmm. don't have to go over here, and that's where they're coming from. They're coming mm -hmm. from this text in Deuteronomy where Moses says you can do it. But he, what he notes in in both Leviticus and Deuteronomy and eventually Joshua, especially we're talking about the covenant of blessing and cursing here. What is noted by God and Moses and Joshua and others is that the Israelites won't do it. Okay. So that's where their foundation comes from this argument. But the text says they couldn't do it. In the text says they could do it, and the text says they couldn't do it. Yeah. So the text says both. Yes, it does. Um, the text also says they wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And and the, what I always point out is is what what's going on here why is there this this conflict and the, the point that i make is this we won't do it and we can't do it it really is both mm -hmm. we cannot live up to the perfect expectations of the law that was actually the point of the law according to roman and, and uh, according I, and, to paul okay i got that that's good yeah. you know you know they couldn't do it because and god god put we talked about this before that god put things in place that they weren't going to be able to, to obey well that's and that we see that in ezekiel mm -hmm. and ezekiel the promise of the new covenant is god coming in and saying i put some of these things in this law that you wouldn't be able to do, right? Mm -hmm. I, I set this thing up for that purpose. <laughs> Why? Because what was the point? And the the whole point of the law was to teach us of our need of for Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. That was the whole point. Yeah. And so when you look at it from that perspective, the law makes a lot more sense. And they say, well, how how horrible of God. But God was always going to save them. Well, it, it, it says in Hebrews chapter 11. You say how horrible of God. And but for, that's what people will say. And so for people to say that, my, my point here is this. No, not how horrible of God, how grateful to God we ought to be. I, I agree. With, but uh, there, are, there are people out there, that I've heard them say it, say, well, I, I don't want to serve a God like that if he's just going to make you fall. But God was always pointing them towards Jesus. It's like, he how, always, do you, how do you teach a kid to ride a bike? They're going to fall. Yeah, but, well, you yeah. got to let them fall. Yeah. And so it, it's it's the same thing. We have to we have to learn that we need God. That's I've the whole point. That, I've seen parents that didn't want them to fall, so they never learned to ride a bike. Well, those are bad parents. Well, I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I mean, peace, they peace. Never, I, they never learned how to ride a bike. So, but, but you know, the the, the um, you know, there's Hebrews chapter 11 says 
that these people were made perfect because of us. Right. They couldn't be made perfect on their own. They had to have Jesus. And because we have Jesus, God saved them. The blood of bulls and goats can't take away sin. That's what Hebrews is about. Yeah. That the law was insufficient. Well, it was insufficient for the way people want to use it. Yeah. You know, it was very sufficient <laughs> for, for what God intended it for. God intended to use the law to bring about Jesus. But it was, he was saving oh. people all along anyway. Oh, well, yeah. because He the, was saving them through faith. Well, we... We, I guess we could, do you want to talk about the trans and, transcendent act of the sacrifice of our Savior? Because there are some acts that are transcendent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's not about... Explain he, to them what, what you mean. Uh, transcendent is like uh, greater gr- like greater than this creation. So, I mean, if you think of this creation from a, from a physics point of view, from like Einstein, right? Einstein pointed out that space, time, and matter are all linked at one point this is essentially the big big bang theory so that Mm -hmm. when you when you had that explosion that was the beginning of time itself time is not god god agrees right so god would say i'm the alpha the omega i am i am the first and the last in other words god is above time god is past he's bigger than time itself well the the act of christ's sacrifice right the act of him taking the blood as the hebrew writer would say into the very throne room Mm and presence of the most holy of the one that's transcendent him splashing that blood on the altar is a transcendent act so it covers the blood of christ covers men who have been dead for thousands of years guys in a simple thing it's like an umbrella yeah it is it covers you like an umbrella yeah it covers them and us so if if you think about it right think of the the all of creation as a as a circle right everything that we know of creation this is the universe this is time this is everything it's a circle and the blood of Christ is an umbrella over that. Mm-hmm. And it shields the entirety yeah. of the creation. So in God's mind, in God's mind, to kind of simplify it some, in God's mind, when they were sacrificing animals and they were they were coming to him through the law, mm-hmm. he was saving them because the blood of Jesus already happened. In his mind, in God's mind. If in, a, in a very real sense, yes. Yeah, that's exactly. Because, because where was that, where was his blood offered? It was offered in, in the eternal. Mm-hmm. So it's it's really weird. So here's the thing, and take it with a caveat, because what what are we talking about here? Okay, we are fish in a fish bowl, trying to figure out how it works outside the fish bowl. Mm-hmm. We've never been outside the fish bowl, so you need to take it's this, this. This we are just trying to explain and and understand the danger in it. We're not saying definitively this is absolutely a hundred percent how it physically work. What we're saying is this is our best that based on the text. This is our best approximation. That's all our we best have. Guess. It's, all it's, we have that's all we text. have. All we have is the text. So, you know, I think we're going to be greatly surprised. Yeah, absolutely. when we get to heaven, I think I think because we we can only go so far. Our yeah. minds just won't let us go no farther. I mean, can you fathom eternity and how eternity works? No, no, no. no we exist no. within time. We can't imagine what it would be like. What it's like outside of time. Mm-hmm. I mean, and you have people who that's what they do: philosophers, mm-hmm. astrophysicists, mm-hmm. physicists. You know, they try to contemplate what that's like. And it's, I mean, it's it's crazy. I yeah. mean, and you have yeah. to understand the limitation inherent to it. Well, so what, what what are we talking about here in Numbers chapter 9? We, well, we've in, gone chap- far in chapter 9, it, it, we're going to start in verse 15 because it talks about the cloud and, and it's it's getting ready to move. All right. In, in chapter 10, they're going to move. They're going to start. They're going to leave. They've been here two years. Right. And they've been at Mount Sinai and God has, has, has showed them how to come back into his presence. And now we're talking about what does life look like in the presence. It's yeah. essentially what we've been talking yeah. about since Leviticus 16. Yeah. yeah. What are God's expectations? What are our obligations? Yeah. Right. And and how does this connect to us? Does it does it have anything to do with us? Let's yeah. get into it. Okay. This is, uh, Numbers chapter nine verse fifteen. On the day the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law, was set up, the cloud covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Uh, Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. So in other words, in the day, over this tent of meeting was a cloud, like a pillar of cloud Mm -hmm. um, is how it's usually seen. And then at night, it was a pillar of fire, Yeah. right? Okay. Um, Whenever the cloud lifted, this is very important. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at his command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. 
When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would camp. And then at his command, they would set out. It said the same thing a lot. That's probably important. We probably need to think Mm -hmm. about that. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning. When it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the clouds uh, stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. How many times has he said that? A bunch. I mean, that's pretty much what all we've been talking about. At the Lord's command, they encamped, just in case you missed it the last ten times. And at the Lord's command, they set out. What did they do? They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command through Moses. And of course, if you're reading this in your Bible or looking at it on the screen, you will see that that word Lord is all caps. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about covenant God. Mm -hmm. Whenever we see that, covenant God. So all throughout this, if you'll notice, that that is who we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. The God of our covenant, covenant covenant Lord, covenant Yahweh, Mm -hmm. at his command, we set out. And basically, that's all he's saying. All he's saying throughout this whole thing is, if God says go, we go. Mm-hmm. If God says stay, we stay. It, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like little children, okay? You plan a vacation, mm-hmm. all right? You know, little children, you don't include them in the planning part of the vacation, the intricate details. Right. Okay. You, they know we're going to point B. We're starting point A, we're going to go to point B. We don't know about C, D, E, and F, all the tentacles. They, we don't know. They don't need to know. They don't need to know that we're going to start out from point A, and we're going to drive to wherever, and then we're going to stop and eat lunch. They don't, they don't need to know that. Well, we're going to stop and have a picnic. Okay. Let's say you, you were going to go to wherever, and you're going to go through Hondo and that way. That's west. And you set out, and you drive there, and you drive three hours, three and a half hours, and there's a beautiful, beautiful park, kind of a, a, a rest area right outside of Hondo. It's got rock benches, uh, it's, got, it's rolling hills, nice place. And you, the kids don't, they can't comprehend it. So you tell them, we're going to have, have a picnic. And they stop at this picnic. And it's a, it's a vision they can never get out of their head after that. Mom and daddy made the, made the, made the call. And they're going to point. That's, these guys don't know where they're going. They have no idea. They're dependent on their father to take them and to say, okay, time to get up, guys. Get dressed. Get all your stuff ready. Get all your stuff packed. Think about it. They have to tear down this tabernacle every time they do this. So if they stop in the morning or in the evening and get up the next morning, they put the tabernacle up, okay, camp around it. The next morning, what do they got to do? Take it. The, the, thing, the thing. You think it, they get, they go, again? We're moving again? Do you think that ever happened? Well, I th- but it, but from my and from my perspective, where where some of the frustration would come into play is, are we going or not? <laughs> do you know how much work I got to do? I got to knock this tent down or pick this tent up, right? If you're a Levite or or whatever, you know. And if, even if you're not, if, and that's if you're a well, Levite, you say you were the tribe of Judah. Yeah, you don't you, have any. You don't have any skin in the game. You here. don't. You don't have that. But you still have to get your clan going and yeah. everything. I mean, yeah. remember, remember the hundreds of thousands of people that are here that have been that are a blessing because they've been fruitful and multiplied. Well, let me tell you, as a father of six. <laughs> <laughs> that's just six they they've got fathers who are probably fathers of 18 yeah you know yeah i mean could you imagine and then you've got to get all that ready to go and it's and it's and you make waiting. sure everybody went to the bathroom everybody had a drink everybody had breakfast you know and you're sitting there waiting you're waiting for this you're waiting for the lord and it to go happen. up or down up or down every morning you come out of your tent and you're it kind of puts in perspective doesn't it why they're frustrated and why they disobey sometimes i think it I, th- I my my opinion is this: when we read this text, we don't read it this way, and we ought to. We ought to read behind the lines here and mm-hmm. see what what is actually going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I could imagine being see, frustrated. People have been in my classes that they say, "Oh, this is right up Dan's alley." This right. Is, I love to read between the lines. Yeah. You, you've got to put this into perspective and think about what would this really be like to be sitting here waiting on this, and I'm getting frustrated just thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. What a child am I? Yeah. What a child am I? Yeah. And that's that's a good thing. It's a good thing to realize. I mean, this is here, right? What does it mean? What does it mean to live in the presence of the Lord? And what it means is exactly this. You get up and you lay down at his command. Mm -hmm. 
And he's trying to teach the Israelites that. Mm -hmm. He's trying to teach the Israelites, I've got this. Wait on me. Mm -hmm. Wait on me. I've got this. Yeah. And, and that's and that's hard to do. It's you know, hard. Because I remember as a child going play and you know, my brother and I sit in the back seat of the car and we had old sixty four Falcon station wagon, no air conditioning, you know, and we'd go to grandma's, you know, because we knew already the where we were going, where we were turning and everything. And and we get bored. I mean, half an hour we're bored. So we start fighting in the back. I can't remember. I can't tell you how many times my father said, "If you guys, two guys, don't knock it off, I'm gonna pull over. I'm gonna spank you right here on the side of the road." You know, and and it, it, hey, we're bored. I can see that here. Yeah, they're gonna get bored and they're gonna make some mistakes because they're bored and because they're frustrated. Yeah, it's not going to. They get tired of what they're eating. They get man. How many times do you remember? I remember going man. Let's stop some. Let's stop at McDonald's. I don't want to eat another dang sandwich. But what you didn't do, and there's a point at which the analogy falls apart, right? And so we have to remember what they're going to do in their rebellion is not, <laughs> hey, are we there yet? No. God could have dealt with that. Mm -hmm. That would have been that. Hey, are we there yet? That. What does that statement say? Well, no. it says that they said stop the car and I might, uh, let me out. Exactly. So right when they, when we say hey, are we there yet? We're looking at our father going. I trust that you're going to get us there. I trust you know where we are. I'm trusting you, and I'm asking you because I, I I'm starting to struggle here. I'm trying to I'm starting to suck wind for whatever reason. Are we are we almost there? Like are we there yet? Right? And as a, as a dad, I'm like, hey, we're going to get there. Don't worry, it's going to be okay. God can deal with that, but that's not what they do. No. Instead, what they do is they go, let me off this train. Yeah. I don't trust you to get me. Stop there. the car. I'm right. done. I I'm want done. out. I don't trust that you know what you're doing. I don't trust you know where you're going. Yeah. I don't trust that you have my good at in, in mind. I, re I remember going to Colorado with my family, and we were following my aunt and uncle. They were, you know, we were going, and there was all kinds of plans. Of course, I'm I'm sick. I guess I'm cause I'm driving because I do drive some of the way. So, so I, I must have been 16, I guess. And uh, and I remember, uh, you know, looking forward to the next. I'd never been in that country before. Yeah, I remember seeing the first hill, the first big hill. First, I man, I live in South Texas. There ain't none of that stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And and getting close to New Mexico and seeing what I was seeing and see getting out of West Texas and seeing, you know, uh, I never, I never uh, had the thought of saying, you know, what I'm done. If we're not going to get there, let's I, just let me out. I'll walk. And that that never crossed my mind. But I can see these people, you know, getting so frustrated that they haven't got there yet. And there's no nice scenery to see. It's desert. They're wandering in the wilderness. It's still, it, you know, I wonder, and, and if you look at their trek, there's times when they went in circles. I, I want to be, I want to I remember that rock. We've been this way before. Do you know where you're going? Yeah, and, and that and you get frustrated and they start making mistakes. When that happens, you start making mistakes. Well, and again, the, the mistakes the mistakes that are made and they're gonna culminate. So it's one thing like when they're heading into and we, and we really need to understand this, right? Mm -hmm. So they've heading into um into Mount Sinai, God God tested them and they failed and they and he put up with them. But now he's entered in a covenant with them and he has told them, I'm gonna be your God. Mm -hmm. You're going to be my people. Just do what I say, and I'm going to take care of it. That's what he's essentially said. Mm -hmm. What we're going to see isn't just some missteps. We're not going to just see some mistakes. What we're no, going to see is a no. people Rebellious. who wholly rebel, yeah. totally where, rebel. where they, they look at that covenant, and they look at what God said, and they, they don't just doubt. But, but you know, Cole, They say, they, I don't believe you. What they do is, is they look at their own situation, their own certainty, and their own feelings. And when you do that, you're going to make some mistakes. You are absolutely, and you're going to start. You're going to say, "I'm better than this. I know better than you. I want let me out." You know, and we deal with a lot of people. We're dealing with families right now. Some families right now, who, you know, they know, they know what's expected. They know what they ought to be doing. Mm -hmm. They know that. I had I had one gentleman tell me, "I know exactly everything you're going to say. I know all the things that you're going to say." And I looked at him and I said, that's great. I'm glad you know it. When are you going to put it into practice so it makes a difference in your life? Difference in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, it, we don't, it's, like, it's like we don't have any new advice here. 
Mm-hmm. We're going to tell you. It's like, the same stuff. It's, it's all in the book. <laughs> it's all things you've heard us say a thousand and one different times. Yeah. The question is, are you actually going to put it into practice? Yeah. Notice what the, what, what the expectation here was in, in Numbers chapter 9 here. The Lord says, go, we go. The Lord says, stop, we stop. That's, what does it look like? What is life? What is life supposed to look like when you've entered back into the presence of God? That. Yeah. When God says go, you go. When God says stop, you stop. Why are people suffering today? Because of instead of living like that, instead of going to God and saying, what is this thing? You're the one calling the shots. You're the one saying go. You're the one saying stop. So I need to come to you with everything, with every little thing. I don't have an opinion on anything until I set it before you. You know, oh, Cole, what's your opinion on the lockdowns in Canada? I don't know. What does God think? I got to go to him for everything. Oh, Cole, what's your opinion on on this foreign policy? I don't know. I'm going to go to God. What does God think? I don't have an opinion. God has an opinion. I want to know what he thinks about it. What does it mean to live like a child? That's what it means. This is what it looks like. The problem we have today is well-meaning brothers and sisters. We're not even talking about the world at this point. Well-meaning brothers and sisters no longer come to God and say, God, what do you think? They, they are, we are too quick. And I'm not they, we, because I struggle with this too. Mm-hmm. We are too quick to say, this is what it is. Without ever ta- going back to God and saying, hey man, this is your, this is your, your parade. Mm-hmm. This is your float. This is your car. This is your trip. What do you think? I think when we get to that point, Cole, I think... I think we, you know, there there are things that that we're going to be involved in, things that in our little world we're going to be involved in, and we quit worrying about the things that we can't do anything about. We quit worrying about God's business and just start taking care of our own. Then it then the things that become elevated in our life is that brother's struggle or my struggle or that it that becomes way more important. But Dan. We've got to start at the very beginning. I understand that. I because do. We've, we've got to start with... I know. What are the things of God? And what are and, the things... What are my responsibilities? And it's all about the last verse. The last verse. It says, it, they obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with the, His commands through Moses. You know, are we going to obey the, the God's order through His commands of, of, all of, his, of all of His writers here? Did He write this book or not? Did He write it and tell us, this is what I want you to do? And then, and then spend our time trying to figure that out. Romans chapter 12. You know, we, we talk, yeah. you know, I mean, we can go to Romans chapter 12. Look at what it says. You know, it says, it says uh, th- in verse 1, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy. And this is what we've been talking about. The mercy of God, putting them in his presence. That's merciful. Absolutely. That's when God gives us what we don't deserve. And he said, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice. That means I no longer have a say so. I have offered myself to him. I am a I'm not a dead sacrifice. I'm a living sacrifice. He said, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. This is what God's looking for. When he talked to the when Jesus talked to the woman at the well, then talking about spiritual, this is what he's talking about. He said, offer yourselves. And he and he and then in verse two he said, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Okay, well. How am I going to renew my mind? Am I going to listen to some knucklehead on, on, on the radio? You're going to listen to us, two knuckleheads? Or are you going to listen to us and say, okay, I'm going to go check this out for myself? Well, and let's and let's talk about what, let's let's very definitively say what the expectation is. Okay. Here's the expectation. If you're in the church, in other words, you've, you've been washed by the blood of Christ. You're back in the presence of God. You've got this expectation and this obligation. What is it? It's this. Serve one another. Yep. Love, sincerely one love mm-hmm. one another. That's it. That's and if it. you don't believe me, just start reading Romans 12, 3 through the rest of the chapter. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what that's he talks exactly about. That's exactly what he says. You know, in Ephesians 5, and, 21. And he says, in the, at the end of verse 2, he says, when you do, when you transform, mm-hmm. and when you when you don't conform any longer, but you allow God to transform you by the renewing of your mind, that's right. then you'll be able to know. Then you'll be able to test what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and holy will. That's right. We'll know what God calls us to do. You know, when I get in that car and I'm going on that trip with my parents, I trust them. I don't have necessarily have to know everything. I don't know everything God's got planned. I know enough. I know enough. He said he's given me enough that I might, that I might, I have enough information so I can have eternal life. That's right. I have enough. I don't need more than that. 
I don't need to know the intricate details of when he's coming back and, and, and when, how that's going to work and all that. I don't need to know all that stuff. You know what I need to know? What is my job now? That's right. What is he calling me to do now? What, hey, okay, Dan, here's the, here's the gifts I've given you. Use them for this. Yeah, when we stand before Christ in judgment, all of us will. All of us will stand before, for, well, before God. And uh, thank, you know, many of us will have Christ with us, and that's, that's, we, we're going to need that to make it through that process. But when we stand before for God in Christ, He's going to look at us, and he's, what He's not going to do is He's not going to give us a test to see if we got the right answer no. on when He was coming back no. or when He wasn't. No. What He's going to ask is, how did you take care of my people? Yeah. How did you treat my people? Yeah. How did you treat the lost? What did you What did you tell them? Did you tell them, you know, the right thing, the truth? Did you Did you encourage them to turn their lives, or did you encourage them in sin? Did you take care of my people? Did you love my people? Did you serve them? Did you give them a cup of water? Did you Did you go visit them in the hospital? Go visit them in prison? Did you Did you go do those things? Did you take care of them? Did you love them like I love them? Mm -hmm. <sighs> And he may say, hey, I gave you the ability or the talent or the gift of encouragement or service or whatever, giving whatever. And how'd you use it? Yeah. Did you use it? How did you use, you know, because he says he's got works prepared in advance for us to do. In good Ephesians works. 2. That's right. He says we are his workmanship. That's right. Created to do good works that and, he prepared in advance for us to do. And, and let's and let's get it real. OK, I, let's let's get real. Let's get very real for a second here. People want to say, oh, I love God. Mm -hmm. I just can't stand the church. Then you don't love God. Then no. you don't love God. God says if you don't love his people, you don't love him. Because the church is his people. Because the church, the church is his people. The church is not a building. So let's 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 get very real for a second. You can't tell me you're serving God. You can't tell me you love God if you're not loving and serving his people. It's right. just that That's right. simple. That's right. Well, next week, we'll get them moving. Maybe. Well, we we got some silver trumpets to talk about, Dan. Oh yeah, we got silver trumpets to talk about. We probably won't get we probably won't get a movie next week. <laughs> well, but we're trying. We'll see. I think we keep saying numbers eleven. It's numbers ten. It's really numbers, numbers 10. ten. It's, it's, it's numbers, numbers 10, ten verse, verse 11. eleven. But we still got ten verses to go before we get there. So, and then you know, fire from the Lord, quail from heaven. I mean, there's all kinds of. Then, then it starts popping. Then we start seeing some. Then once they start moving, they start bringing on a lot of popping. Yes. They but bring it's, it. It's still difficult though because yep. the chronolo the 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 numbers once the narrative starts back up again, it isn't necessarily chronological. No. So no. he's gonna be like, "You're gonna wander in the desert for 38 years," and then it's like three verses, and then all of a sudden we're done with that. Yeah. So it's it it it's kind of strange. Yeah. But we'll we'll, we'll talk about it. When we'll we talk there. about it. All right. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the for the power of the word. We thank you, Father, for your for your watch and your care over us. Help us, Father, to be. Uh, to be committed and dedicated to you. Yes. Help us to truly be uh, passionate about being obedient and, and being followers of you. Father, we know that sometimes we, we try to get in the way. No, sometimes we do get in the way. And I pray, Father, you be patient with us. Uh, thank you, Father, for your forgiveness and your love and your watch over us. Just help us, Father, to be transformed. Help us to be renewed so that we can really focus on what our job is and do it with the best we know how. Help us to love each other. Help us to serve each other. Help us, Father, in, in, by doing that, to know that we were loving and serving you. And we thank you for the opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.